It is freedom of from the self. The self itself is perpetually exhausting, ego, polarizing, assessing, trying to raise its consciousness, trying to get to the next dimension, go to the next level. There's good things in all that. It's great to take responsibility. There's a lot of validness and benefits to doing that. But in terms of the question, how does Mr. Christianity help you? It literally is the exit from all matrices. It liberates you from the self and it fuses you with the creator in a way that is just ridiculously joyful. Welcome to the Dr. Espen podcast. I'm Espen. Today I'm joined by not only one of the highest level uh, people I have ever met in my entire life, but also a mentor and a dear friend of mine. This is this is John Grant Harvey. Today, myself and John Grant Harvey, we're going to be unpacking some powerful stuff. The topic of today is unmasking the matrix with mystical Christianity. Stay tuned. If you're anything like what I was when I was growing up, I had a I was really put off by anything to do with religion. And then when I found me, the essence of me through spirituality, through connection to source, I recognized that I had it all wrong. In fact, the majority of the world, as I believe it in terms of Christianity, truly does not reflect the true essence of Christ. And today we are going to have a very difficult conversation, uh, a very important conversation, a very different conversation, a conversation that you need to have a conversation that you need to listen to, a conversation that may just give you the opportunity to truly connect to what really matters in life. So please do stay tuned. This is, you're in for an absolute treat. It's going to be disruptive and it's going to be beautiful. John Grant Harvey is a, is a Christian mystic and a master coach. He was my coach for many years. God, I have learned so much from this man. Uh, John specializes in clearing personal blockages and connecting people true to their spirit. Um, having worked with a wide range of leaders across the world from the slums of India with the incredible work and uh, the 30 plus trips that John personally has made to India to the orphanages that he supports down there and owns and runs. And it's incredible. We'll have that conversation. But John is a man of profound service for the people. Um, from uh, helping people from the slums of India to the biggest boarding and speaking stages in the world, John is profoundly passionate about helping people um, see how they can become, how you can become the ultimate version of yourself. Welcome to Unmasking the Matrix with Mystical Christianity. John Grant Harvey, how are you, my friend? I am fantastic, and thank you. It's, uh, it's, it's a big intro there, so I certainly hope this, this dialogue can, can uh, live up to that and provide some value for the listeners, but I am fantastic and very delighted to be here. Humble as always, my friend. Right off the bat, let's ask this question. Okay, what is mystical well, Christianity? Well, this is um, a big question, but what we'll start with is what it's not. Because to even approach this big question, let's begin with what it's not. And so what it's not is it's not a fantasy that we create, like this this God is this fantasy that we create from our own minds. It's not that. It's not a set of rules or checklists that we follow that we think if we're doing these particular things, we're ticking the boxes, we're a good Christian, we're a good human being, because the self or the ego creates polarity in doing so. It creates a sense of righteousness that I'm following these particular things. It has a sense of judgment proportionate to that righteousness. So it's it's not that. It's a dead system. And the Bible, the ancient scriptures even reference that. It says it's not about following the law. The law points you to a special place. So it's not those things. Um, it's certainly not the institutions that have perverted uh, in, in an uncomprehensible way yeah. the purity and the essence of Christianity. So it's not those things. So it's definitely not that. When I was pondering on the question, and I'm, I'm kind of feeling a sense of awe to even how do I even begin to answer this question because it's enormous. Mystical Christianity is a mystery that we enter into, but it's a living mystery. And the best way I could begin to encapsulate it, which is in essence the opposite of what mystical Christianity is. We don't really want to encapsulate it. We want to kind of expand into it. But if I have to, I would say it's a series of progressive encounters into the living God. It's like it's a series of encounters that you experience that your spirit understands and grows into. 
and it's living, it's expansive, and it's, it's deep. Powerful. I do this often at my events. You know, I teach the essence of quantum science and how it's been scientifically proven now for over 100 years since Max Planck uh, founded the quantum theory that we are made up of mostly energy. 99.9% .9 of us is, is pure consciousness and energy, and less than 0.1% is matter, crystallized mm. waveforms, right? And so then if we know through science that we're more than just flesh and bone, how would you say that someone then can have that next level of encounter with spirit? Because I know this has been a really big thing in your life and I've been, you know, watching you very carefully for many years and it's been a privilege for me to be able to see what you're manifesting in life, what you're creating in life, how humble you've uh, always been and what you're able to achieve, serve and, 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 and use to, 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 you know, help and improve the lives of others. What's been your relationship to Christ, to spirit, um, and why is it so important? What's been my relationship? Why is it so important? It, it, what comes up, it's the North Star. It's like it's a clear direction. But in my own growing into that clarity, I've had to walk down a myriad of paths to understand by virtue of contrast what it's not. And in, in doing so, we get clearer. Uh, and so... A lot of it is a stripping away. It's a falling away. Um, it's it's experiencing various spiritual systems where they're not so pure. They're not so clean. Uh -huh. they, they take from you. They give. They take. There's an esoteric technology or knowledge that you can accrue, but then it takes something from you. And so for me, by virtue of walking that path, I get clearer and clearer and clearer. And that clarity for me, and this is the mystery of it, it's not a clarity in the realm of the intellect. Even though my intellect has got sharper, it's got clearer. It's even not even at the level of the soul, which I put my will, my emotions in that category, uh, or emotional intelligence in that category. It's great to develop in all those areas. This is something which I call the spirit. And the ancient scriptures talk about that God is spirit. And so that communication happens spirit to spirit. And so that unfolds through the faculty of the soul, through the mind. And so it's very important to let the intellect, as great as science is, as great as the intellect is, when we make that the pedestal, we kind of deduce and reduce spirit down because we need to understand it. We need to box it. We need to label it. But the reality is spirit is like infinitely more greater than anything our intellects can conduce down to. Now, I'm not saying don't have your mind. Of course, I love mental. I love, I love to think. I love to reason. I love science. But it's understanding that there's something far, far, far more powerful and deeper. And science is continually evolving. It's continually upgrading. There's revelations unfolding. And so for me, that's an important distinction because it helped me uh, appreciate spirit more and the guidance that it's producing uh, and, and tune myself into it more, if that makes sense. Totally does. And just quickly on this, I know um, both you and I have spent a lot of years uh, studying energy, understanding the esoteric mystical sciences, looking at where power, where, where, where uh, sp true spiritual power comes from. And as I say in my events, we only work with the highest light. And this is something I think is really important just to quickly touch on because I know that there are pay people out there that are remarkably powerful. They can manifest. They're an alchemist. They can create. They can attract a lot of people, a lot of following. But I've sensed into, quote, unquote, um, their energy signature, and I've sensed they're not working with the highest light. So can you yeah. just give me your two cents worth on this? Because I think this is really important from the aspect yeah. if you if you want to keep it mystical or esoteric, <clears throat> where a lot of people have sold their souls for power, for money, for influence, not working with, not connecting to the highest light, not to Christ, not to something else that is pure. What's your, what's your take on that? Well, that's a podcast in and of itself. Yeah. It's a deep <laughs> I love the question. Like I'm, I'm savoring, you know, even being asked that question. So thank you. Um, it's something that I've certainly explored in depth myself. I've worked with a lot of different mystics over the years from, from people that had hadn't eaten in two years. I went and trained them in various countries to high level psychics who were mentors of other psychics. And they would channel different frequencies towards me and say, this is the direct will of God frequency. And, and I would like, but I've encountered the Holy Spirit. It's higher than that. And we would have discussions about it. You know, it's not a simple black and white, you know, discussion, 
What I will say is it's not also not a discussion to persuade someone into. It's a discussion where your own spirit discerns it and understands it mm. for itself. Mm. And that is something very personal, very unique. And I respect that. I respect that journey in others. To give one example, I have a, a friend of mine who was a, was a practicing shaman, used to run many retreats. People would come from around the world to work with the shaman. And he was a very dedicated mystic. And he used to work with a particular being that would show up in his auric field, energy field, preparing for the ceremonies. And this being would mentor him, teach him, empower him, develop him. And this particular being, uh, one day when I met this gentleman, I said, listen, I, I can't be wrong, but I'm just sensing that there's a higher frequency you could potentially be working with. But hey, what do I know? Just pray to Jesus, see what happens. This was the conversation over lunch one day in Bali. And some, some time back, he got back to me and he said, John, I was praying, meditating on, on, on Jesus. I had this encounter. The frequency was really high. I'm confused now, like this being that I'm working with and Jesus, are they the same? I said, I don't know. Just keep praying. See what happens. You know, so he had his journey to, to, to continue to take. And then one day he was uh, on the, the cactus medicine, I think it was called San Pedro. You know, and he's running the ceremony. He was praying to Jesus, praying to Jesus, who are you? Are you really God? Who are you? Who are you? Meditating, meditating for a few weeks now. He's been doing this. And then boom, he had this direct encounter with Jesus. This is an encounter. And the, the mystical scriptures are filled with men and women of God having encounters that radically transform them, change them, give them what we call a contrast frame, a contrast experience. And in Thomas's case, he had this contrast experience where by virtue of that encounter, he could begin to discern that the being that he was formerly working with was of a lower vibration, mm -hmm. was of a lower kind of dimension, if you will. But it took that encounter for him to understand that. And that's very personal for Thomas. Um, and, and it's very personal for different individuals in, in how we can discern, are we working with the highest light? But, but if people are talking in reference of Christ, normally a few things happen to give you a bit of an indicator. One is that your love of Christ increases. Mm -hmm. So you have this, the relationship strengthens, the union, the quantum entanglement, however you want to think of it. Uh, then also a revelation occurs that his dominion of who he is, is, is all powerful. Now I say that in, in, a, in a healthy ethical sense, because a lot of times when we think of power, we think of people ruling over others. But in Christ's case, it's about deep love of humanity. It's about the upliftment. It's about life itself, because a lot of the spiritual beings and a lot of spiritual systems give you power and take from you. If you look at Carlos Costaneda's work, sorcery work, it's, it's a lot of that. It's, it's like contractual. It's to give and take. Uh -huh. And this is, this is something Thomas talked about. I said, when, when, cause I was very curious. I went down to interview him. I said, listen, what, what happened? You had this Christ encounter. I mm -hmm. said, what's the difference? He said, look, it's just, it's giving, he's giving to me. It's, it's just, it's life itself just pouring into me. So I think that's another metric or indicator or benchmark that we can look at is that we're actually being filled with life and um, it's clean, it's pure. I love that. And it's almost like for the lack of a better kind of terminology, it's like unconditional love. I just love. He just yeah, loves, yeah. he just gives, rather than I'll give you this if you do this for me, kind of level, a level lower yeah. than that. And, and, and I honestly, dude, I think this is so powerful to really just have this conversation and thank you all for listening and watching and sharing with other people because this is a conversation that really has changed my life. As I said, I grew up as an atheist. Um, I, I never had a relationship to Christ. I went to church just to do my confirmation and it was nothing there. In fact, both my parents, particularly my father is like, Absolutely not. I won't hear anything about it because of their trauma, because of their wounding, because of, you know, what the church and or those, you know, institutions in the past have done, you know, traveling the world, stealing from every culture, hiding it in the Vatican. I mean, we can just go on and on and on about the horrible shit that has been done. Um, but I think from being so manipulated, we also, speaking for myself, as a person, were manipulated because I had a very tainted view of Christ. I had a very tainted view of what it was. I, I thought it was the religion. I thought it was the way they treated people. And and I thought it was the true word for word of what's in the Bible, as in instead of reading between the lines and seeing and understanding what's really coming through. And I was lost, my man. I have to be honest, I was lost for a long time. And then as I became to spiritually discern more, as you speak, uh, speak of, I started to tap in and feel, and Christ came through like a lightning bolt, but it was not as in, an, in a, just a powerful way. It was in such a graceful way that I could just 
I could just be me. I could just be loved. And I felt this. And even now that I speak of it, I truth bump. My entire body is truth bump because I know it's true to my to my nervous system. So yeah. I just, as I speak of this, I just wanted to mention it because people watching maybe just, yep, Christ's my man. I'm with Christ. This is how it works. Powerful. Yes. Welcome home. Right. But for others, it might be a little bit like, mm, yeah, I'm put off by that. What would you say to that, to those who might be put off by uh, it? Because I know I was one of them. I was one of them, and I validate that. And I thank you so much for, for, for making this point because it needs to be spoken to. It needs to be validated, appreciated, and understood because it's it's justifiable. I mean, particularly there will be a lot of people watching this who are very empathic, clairsentient, sensitive, discerning. They see through BS. They, they can hear the tonality in the religious systems. They can feel the facade that, that, that interfaces through those systems. And they're like, I don't want anything to do with that. They're valid. They're right. And that's what my hope in this, in this conversation is to create a fresh canvas, a blank canvas of approaching Christ and mystical Christianity in a clean, pure way that has got nothing to do with the denigration, perversion, corruption, um, bastardization, if, if you will, of, of the purity of what we're talking about here. And that needs to be validated and respected because people are right to feel those ways and, and have those those wounds and hurts. And, and that's, um, you know, I, 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 I'm sorry that's happened, but it, it, it's just got nothing to do with the, the purity of Christ. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So then for those viewers and listeners um, feel in this moment perhaps, what it would be like to try, uh, or if you are already in a relationship, to deepen the relationship with the Spirit of Christ, um, and and what this would mean for you. Just, just as you know, I have, we have no vested interest in this, but I think for me, I want to share this, and I want to share it with an open heart and with presence, because it really has profoundly changed my life, and I know it has yours as well, John. Um, yeah, it's very beautiful, very beautiful. Thank you. A question for you. Ready? Okay, so we, got, we got the topic right. Unmasking the matrix uh, with mystical yes. Christianity. Okay, so we've covered yeah. the mystical Christianity part and go back and listen to it again. It's more about the spirit. It's about the energy. It's about the connection to the purity of the energy that is Christ yeah. rather yes. than the dogmatic religious, anything to do with that and more as John has shared. Now, in regards to this topic, unmasking the matrix with mystical Christianity, uh, what is the matrix in your eyes? Again, multiple podcast question, but to deduce it down as best as I can, with most of us, or a lot of us have seen the movie, The Matrix. Okay. It's a nice depiction of, of, of a system, but the matrix for me is there's numerous matrices. So for example, when the pandemic played out, we saw a matrix of a sort of indoctrination, conditioning through media, through certain organizations, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I think a lot of people watching this saw that play out and understood that was a type of matrix of persuasion, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's an architecture, a systematic architecture of persuasion with a type of will, an agenda that's pushed through the matrix. And there's a weight, there's a gravity to it that is there to sway, bend, and influence individuals to move in a specific direction. Now, you have numerous matrices. The ancient scriptures reference principalities and rulers in high places that govern the atmospheres that preside over this dimension. And so you could look at it in that sense. So there's so many types of matrices, depends. When you, when you go into a, um, a school, a particular university, they have a, a culture. A culture has a subset of values, beliefs, visions. That's a type of matrix, if you want to look at it that way. That culture influences you. Now, ideally, we want to find the most healthy, functional cultures that we can exist within, cultures that uh, give life to us, that give respect to our free will, that give choices, that enrich us. So the matrix, matrices exist everywhere. Um, within the personal development industry, you also have a matrix, and a lot of times it's the matrix of the self. Now, there's a, there's a healthy side to that, and then there becomes a snare within that, that the self is the thing that's trying to fix itself all the time. So there's a lot of different matrices in, in essence. That's my kind of a short answer to a very deep question. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I see that a framework within a framework, a system within a system. When people are referring to the matrix, would you say just to spin it off a little bit, are we living in a hologram? Mm -hmm. Is what's, what's your take on what's going on here in the upper third dimension? 
we're living in the hologram. Um, I don't necessarily believe we're necessarily living in a hologram, but let's say the model that I work with in the and mystical Christianity is that we have a physical body, a soul, and then we also have a spirit. Now, there's been times I've accessed and, 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 and worked with my spirit, and it operates at a frequency so far ahead of where my soul operates. It's like crazy. And so from that place, it looks like I'm in a hologram here. It's slow. It's predictable. Um, you can see through patterns. Uh, when, when you access that aspect of yourself and you see it through, it's like, come on, what's going on here? It's, it's like a show. It's like a TV show. It's like the Truman Show. It's like a predictable sequence of things. And yes, when there's times when we look into, let's say, the pandemic or certain scenarios and you can see it playing out, it's mechanistic. It's predictable depending on the eyes you have to see and, and the ears, you know, the, what you can penetrate with your discernment. So, yeah, it does appear to be um, a hologram or a show or something of that nature. It can appear that way. Do I think it is in that specific context? Not necessarily. No. I do think there's a divine beauty and natural, there's a, there's a deeper process going on here. Yeah, beautiful. And so in regards to mystical Christianity and this so-called matrix or matrix C, okay. matrices, how can mystical Christianity help listeners, viewers, anyone free themselves from the matrix? Well, it's interesting. They, we can't really, even through mystical Christianity, we don't even free ourselves from it because that's the self. That's another matrix of the self perpetuating itself. It's like Einstein said that the, the, the mind that created the problem can't solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So mystical Christianity says, hey, listen, you need some help. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's, it's, let's just chill it down to something in its essence. It's like, relax, man. Okay. Like, you want a hand here? Do you want some help? Uh, like, and this is God reaching back in. It's a relationship. It's a love story. It's like, hey, would you like some help? Quantumly, however you want to think of this, if you want scientific language, quantumly entangled with me, I'll help you out of this, this matrix down here. Um, I'll fuse with you. I'll, I'll support you. I'll give you revelation. I'll show you things that you don't, don't know. Um, and I'll, I'll help you come out of it. So it's not even the self can do it. This is what mystical Christianity says. So why I smile with joy, and, and I, I want to let myself exude this joy a little bit because this is what it means to me. It is really a joy that surpasses any understanding. Why? Because it's a liberation from the self. Mm. It is the most joyous revelation I can begin to even convey. It is freedom of from the self. The self itself is perpetually exhausting, ego, polarizing, assessing, trying to raise its consciousness, trying to get to the next dimension, go to the next level. There's good things in all that. It's great to take responsibility. You know, I worked as a professional coach with elite athletes. We have to help them take responsibility. They can't grow unless they do that. There's, there's a lot of valor, validness and benefits to doing that. But in terms of the question, how does Mr. Christianity help you? It literally is the exit from all matrices. It liberates you from the self and it fuses you with the creator in a way that is just ridiculously joyful um, and just liberating. <laughs> like, there's no words for it. I, I have to try to deduce it into words. And um, that's, what, that's what it can um, help you do <laughs> to, to begin to even uh, answer that question. I, I agree. I absolutely agree. And, you know, I did a podcast a little while ago, an episode, uh, I think it's episode 14. It's called the top 10 quantum biohacking secrets for mm. peak performance in life and in business. And as I sat down and as I started to write this, I was like, okay, so what's biohacking? Okay. So it's understanding, you know, energy and who we are and then mastering your mind, your emotions and your, your life. And then this and that and this and that. And then we've got all the tools, you know, we've got the, the devices and we've got the biohacking stuff and we've got the fasting and, you know, you can name it. And I just went through the whole list and I asked myself the question before I recorded this podcast. And the question was, what is the ultimate biohack. If I wanted to really achieve peak performance, wholeness, fulfillment, grace, beauty, everything and anything, what would I do? Where would I go? What would I connect with? What would I use? If for the lack of a better word. And the only answer that came through, John, the only answer, there was no other option was having a connection to God, having a connection to spirit, having the a, a, a profoundly beautiful, regular, ongoing, relationship and conversation with Christ. And it blew me away because 
Well, if everything is energy and if everything comes from source, then isn't it crazy to think about, this is my the way my mind works, how many people are walking around with such devastating, destructing amounts of spiritual disconnection? What are your thoughts? Well, the spiritual disconnection, absolutely. And again, what comes up for me when I hear you say that is, again, just empathizing with people having very um, negative relationships to this thing called Christ or this being in churches. It, I, I can understand that. It's like it, it's sad because it, it's, it's a, it disconnects and then people go on these different journeys. Uh, what, I also, what I also came up for me hearing you say that is, again, appreciating all the different tools and techniques and different things. They all help. But yes, for me, I've come to this point after many, many journeys. And I love knowledge. I love things that help you grow. It was, it was, it's my obsession for a long time. But I would have to agree, it's, it's this connection to Christ. It is the biohack, if you, if you want to use that analogy, it's the biohack of all biohacks. It's, the, it's life itself, it's living water, it's food, it's spiritual power. Uh, but again, it has to be done for people in a way that's personal and truthful for them in their innermost being. Not yeah. following someone saying something in a way that's not authentic for them. And so this is what makes it pure and clean as opposed to a religious dogma that's trying to be put upon somebody. Again, mm. contrasting it. I, I thank you for, for the clarity here because, again, this helps us choose what type of relationship we want to have or where we want to engage in that relationship. You know, I will go to some churches and I'll have a, an experience that doesn't feel quite right, and I'll go to other churches where the community, where the presence, where the message, where the preacher is just on point and I just am filled with my truth, truth, truth bumps, right? So that's something perhaps you can use, listeners, viewers out there, feel in your heart, feel in your beingness, in your nervous system, what feels right for you, um, 100%. what kind of prayer, what kind of conversation feels right for you, um, and also offering up, you know, like I said, a level three type relationship, you know, please show me how I can serve today, how I can walk closer to you today. Um, how I can give back and be of service, work through me today, channel through me today, let your will be the way. It's one of the ways that I say, one of the things that I say every day. And so I think it's that that level as well, which is which is really important. So yeah, for those listening and watching, what, what does this mean for you? Take a note, uh, feel, and and what it would be like for you to have a conscious connection and conversation with 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 such powerful energy, such clean uh, and yeah, you know, in English language can't put words on it. We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> we're trying, yeah. <laughs> this is an experience. But that's right? the fun part, right? That's the fun part. It's this this reverence and this joy of like approaching something so beautiful and, and giving it the respect of the, the spaciousness of what it is. It's beyond. And so I'm very okay to fumble around in, in having this conversation. I'm very okay to be inadequate in, in trying to succinctly communicate it uh, because that's the beauty of it. And, and that's the invitation in this conversation is to have your own connection with this and also to validate that when, you, when you've seen other churches or other people doing things and it doesn't feel right, that's, maybe it doesn't feel right for a reason because there's yeah. a unique connection for Christ for you that's, that's going to be completely unique. And um, I know I've been a misfit for many, many years and not being able to fit in here, fit in there. <laughs> you know, oh, well, am I on the wrong planet? Like, what's going on here, John? <laughs> but it ends up somewhere more exquisitely beautiful than I could have ever imagined. And that's yeah. a very more clean, clean connection to, to the Lord Jesus than I ever imagined was possible. But before I got there, I had to uh, realize I was not fitting into all these other ways of being and all these other molds or religious templates that just yeah. was not resonating in an, in an, in an, on an innate level for me. Oh, beautiful. I love this. And again, tuning in, what feels right for us. I think this is really, really important in life in general. You know, your intuition is strong. You know, trust yourself and trust what feels good and keep exploring it. And what what a connection to Jesus, to, to that level of spirit would be for you. Okay, segueing straight in there, right off the bat, we haven't talked about this question, but I want to know, I've studied this a lot mm. lately. I found a really uh, a lot of interest in this topic. Um, I see, you know, you look at the Old Testament, the New Testament, a lot of it's been rewritten. Constantine came in, changed it all. 
decided to pull a whole bunch of stuff out of the, you know, the Bible, including the book of Enoch, man, the other things. It seems that the, the message has been manipulated. I don't know the details. What I do know is what I can feel. And what I've done as the, for the last, you say, particularly the last, say, seven, eight years, been studying Christ and, and this uh, Christianity, mystical Christianity more, also under your mentorship and guidance, thank you very much. I've come across a lot of information about the Essenes. What do you know about the Essene culture? Uh, what are your thoughts on how Jesus was indeed a mystic? And he wasn't just what he's portrayed to be. There was actually something more to it. I believe he traveled to Egypt, um, into India, learned a lot of amazing things. Do you have any information on this that you'd like to share? What are your thoughts? I don't have so much information on this. W the way I look at it is we talk about the Bible being, you know, this, this, I have studied the book of Enoch. Um, I have met different biblical scholars who, who go into the minutiae of detail. Um, what I believe and what, what was, um, there's a gentleman called Prophet Lobby. I like, I like accuracy and real authority and power. And this gentleman moves in a lot of power and authority. He's, he's Prophet prophetic. Lobby. I've, I've seen this. Prophet look Lobby. that up, guys. Go ahead. He is like laser precise in his prophetic like unctions and, and, and awareness. It's, it's, it's quite incredible. And so he said something that was, it helped me connect with the Bible in, in a fresh way is that each ancient scripture has seven dimensions that you can assimilate that knowledge by the power of spirit based on your level of consciousness of where you're at. So that it changes. Uh, and so that to me was very um, comforting or what's not even the right word. It was very liberating, I would say, to be able to approach the Bible with more reverence and more, more mystical awareness that it can unlock. But when it comes to the, the validity of the, of, the, of the scriptures, there is a lot of mathematical code throughout the Bible. Yeah. Um, and I was actually talking to my friend, Joao, who's a lot more astute in this than myself. And he, uh, you know, he was telling me, John, did you know this? Did you know this mathematical, the precision, the, the probabilities of these prophecies, it's just astronomical in, in a scientific mathematical probability. Like even before the New Testament, before Jesus came on the scene, we know that the Torah, the Old Testament was written a long time before. Yet you had people like King David speak about Christ coming. You had the prophet Isaiah in very specific detail talk about this being called Jesus coming and the importance of this being. And so, you know, that's remarkable. Yeah, there, there's a mystical power in this book. And so for me, when I approach the Bible through my mind and through my logic, it kind of blocks me out. It doesn't really work for me. I actually don't even like the book. I'll be quite frank with you when I approach it from that place. When I approach it from spirit and it unlocks for me, it's literally spiritual food and I feel my whole being unlock. So it's a, it, I do believe it is a very powerful book, very, very powerful. And I do believe that if there is a God, which I believe 100%, I don't believe I know there is, I believe that he would maintain the integrity of the scriptures in, in some form, it, whether it's through spirit animating and speaking to the individual in a personal way. Um, I believe that that to be the case for myself. Beautiful. So how do we know if we're connecting with Jesus in spirit? It's a good question. I think it's, a, again, a very personal question, but normally it's these kind of metrics or, or benchmarks you can, you can begin to be clear that that's happening is that your love for him increases. And again, I'm going to get a little bit romantic in saying this or, or, or a bit deliriously joyous in saying this because it really is a burning love. Like it is a love because you understand that you were loved first. The ancient scriptures talk about God reaching out and loving us first. And so my response is a love response back. And yeah. so you will feel as you're connecting a love for him increasing. You will also begin to be more aware like my friend Thomas when he had the encounter with Christ the authority of who Christ is. He's not just an ascended master like other masters. There is a sovereignty and there's a power of who this being is. That he actually was God incarnating in the flesh to interface with us in this dimension. And so you begin to know that for a fact, not because someone tells you that, but you can actually begin to see it and discern it. And by virtue of discerning other spiritual systems, you become clearer in that truth. So that's another indicator. Okay, okay. When you do this, I disappear. So let's keep on doing what you're doing right now, because what you're talking about yes. is so true to my being. I love the mystical okay. side of things. Jesus okay. on, on the earth, ascended master, more than that, God infused, God in man form. 
crucified, whatever else. What What is that? Like, how can we take this and even begin to put words on it? But if we were to try, what would, what would you say? Oh, don't, don't. I'm getting, that's too much. I'm getting so excited. Uh, <laughs> because for me, when I used to hear the Bible back in the day, it was not good news. People say it's good news. I'm like, it's not good news. I just feel like I'm not a good person. I'm never good enough. It scares me. I don't like it. Now it is the most ridiculously good news I have ever, I can't even comprehend how good the news is. It is amazing. It's love. Like imagine this is, God himself comes into a human incarnation, serves us, doesn't judge anyone. Like they want to stone the woman in adultery. He's like, I don't judge you. You know, I, where are they to judge you? Like so compassionate. Then all his apostles are trying to be like the greatest. He's like, hey, if you guys want to be the greatest, you're going to be the servant of everybody. He washes their feet. Could you imagine God in a physical form washing his creation's feet? That is a God of amazing love, like amazing, 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 unspeakable love penetrating in to our dimension here to, to bring us back and reconcile us back to him. That is, to me, just amazing. <laughs> It's just amazing. So this is what the story is about because you then realize that you're being brought back by love, by spirit, not rules, not checklists, not your ability to be compliant and follow them, but by an internal transformation of love, grace, mercy, and you go from glory to glory. You're literally transforming into a light being by the power of love and his spirit in you. That's what Mr. Christianity is. And it's, it is prolifically exciting. It's just oh. <laughs> I'm going to stop myself because I don't want to come across the loser here. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. You can take that. I might take that sound bite and put that at the at the beginning of the podcast, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Talking about it. <laughs> beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so, I mean, if we were to take that expanded awareness and continue this conversation, you mentioned coming back to God. Mm. What, do you think, what do you think is going on in the world right now? I mean, we can, I guess, only speak for ourselves, but- Something's changing. Something's changing rapidly. You mentioned the pandemic, the scandemic. Stuff's going on. We can see through yeah. that. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we can discern that without judging it. We can be aware of what is really going on. But what yeah. on the greater scale, if it is in this instance coming back home to spirit, what are your thoughts? Look, I'll approach this topic softly because I'm not – a prophet in the sense of an office of a prophet. I don't necessarily see these things, but I do have patent, patent recognition awareness. So what I mean by that is when we had the Spanish flu, shortly after that, there was a war. And this is something Prophet Lodi was, was pointing out as well, that we often have a, a uh, um, like a virus or a plague, and then we have a war after that. Well, we had that with the pandemic. We had the COVID, and then we had, what do we have? The Ukraine war, Israeli war. So we see that pattern following suit. We also know that the historical reserve currency status oscillates between 80 years, 70 years, 105 years. You know, if you look at Spain, it was a bit more than Portugal in, in, in the past. We now have America. I believe it's 105 years. Don't quote me on that. So we see yeah. this. Now we see the BRICS forming. So what, what I call this is a bifurcation point. We see a destabilization of a major power. And when that happens, there's a wobbling. Yeah. But in that... There's also re revelation and new shifts occurring. But again, it's a big question. For me, I'm very much seeing a lot of things more open from the mystical side. A lot of things are a lot more revealed for those who can discern and see those things. So there's a lot of stuff playing out now that's freaking obvious. It's like, oh my gosh, if, you, if you've got the IC, it's like, wow, they're not even hiding this stuff. It's like, it's out there. And so I'm excited by that because I like transparency. I like truth. I like things being brought out into the open. Um, and so I'm excited for these times, but I have a lot of joy and power inside of me that gives me that, that kind of sense of strength. Um, so I'm excited. I mean, again, some very powerful prophets have just said we're going into a you know very precarious next season. So I'm again, I'm watching to see how that plays out. Um, let's see. You know, again, that's probably about the, as far as I'd like to go with that answer. Because again, I don't yeah. consider myself, you know, fully a prophet in that sense. Yeah, I love it. And you mentioned Prophet Lovey a couple of times. It's a couple of times. L-O-V-Y. Uh, uh, um, yeah. Great guy to look at. I've studied some of his work. I can sense from my discernment that the 
the what's happening in his rooms, in his church, mm-hmm. in his community. Um, it's not fake. I cannot. It's not fake. You see the healings and the transformations and even banishing evil spirits. I mean, the stuff that you really don't really want to talk about because you don't really believe it or whatever until you see it. And then, you know, what was that? Yeah. So a great guy to look up. Definitely. I know you've done, uh, you've spent time in this presence and really learned a lot from that. I think that's really special. Um, so look up Prophet Lovey, L-O-V-Y. I wanted to, I wanted to segue a little bit because the whole, the mystical side of things, you know, the, the mind can often um, go, okay, so how do, how do I do this, John? We, we've talked about um, feeling. We've talked about praying. We've talked about studying the scriptures. We've talked about, I think the primary takeaway that I'm getting so far is really using our own discernment and our own nervous system to tune into what type of relationship with Christ or in what church, in what way feels right for us. I think it's imperative that we keep an open mind and that we decide to have a relationship with the creator. Okay. And so this is important because if we don't make that decision, I think what some of the greatest purposes that we have to be on this planet is either to experience the greatest amount of source disconnection or source connection. So I love devoting myself to a relationship to the creator so that I can have that sense, not to receive a sense, but to be in that essence, in that connection. When we talk about Christ as a ascended master, mystical being, coming into flesh, being so utterly humble, graceful, wise, loving, then, you know, 2000 something years ago, if we were, and we're not projecting anything into the future or assuming anything, will there be a return of the Christ? Will there be a return of the Christ in us? I know we can't answer this because we just don't know God's plan. But if you were to put some words on it, what would you say? What's in your field in that regard? This may sound a bit assumptive, but I have a fair strong clarity on this particular question for myself. I, I feel that it's increasing in me prolifically. It's, it's, it's scarily exciting. So I feel something's unfolding. So Jesus talks about the kingdom being within you. So that's definitely happening. What I 100% believe it's not is an abstract frequency. It's not. Like you're a being. The scriptures talk about you being created just a little bit lower than the Elohim, which is God himself. So we are God men becoming, God women becoming. And so that that's happening inside of us um, as we walk in union with Christ. And it's, it's for me, it's very practical, very tangible, very real. And it's a, it, the Bible talks about a joy that surpasses understanding because understanding is from the intellectual faculty that assimilates data and information, calibrates itself to be integrated in society. But the joy from the spirit it's illogical. <laughs> it surpasses that. And, and that's certainly something real. I do believe that Christ is coming back as a being. Um, I had an encounter about four months ago that was very, very real for me. You know, I'm first time in my life. I'm, I'm 45. I had this encounter. I'm lying in bed asleep at the risk of being vulnerable here and sharing an encounter. I will, I will share it. I was fast asleep. And all of a sudden, I woke up out of bed worshipping, worshipping in spirit. I can't even do that now if you ask me to do that. And I used to think worshipping was like giving my energy away and all this. So I, I can understand reservations when I when people hear the word worship. But anyway, I worship, worship, worship. And this is the most amazing feeling. And inside the quality of this energy of the worship, there was a frequency I'd never felt before. And I've felt quite a few frequencies in my time. And this was a sensation of victory over every single thing in existence. I don't even know how to describe that. Like it, it was, I never felt that before. And I was worshiping from that energy. It was getting stronger, 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 stronger. I'm like, what? And then boom, at the edge of my room comes Christ. We didn't have a conversation. I know some people have conversations and that. It was just my spirit responding to his presence. And wow, <laughs> there's no words for it, but it is the most fulfilling completion of any experience or any encounter and that was just in in relative proximity to to his being and so you know if he's coming to my room there for a moment and that's my response it's very plausible for me to believe that he he can come back into this dimension 
and and the scriptures talk about every tongue will confess every knee will bow that he is lord now the thing with that is for a mental i would have resistance to that but my spirit knew no one needed to convince me it just knew it's the clarity of clarity is beyond clarity and that was the response so for me if that happens it, it would be a very beautiful and joyous and organic response that we would have to the presence of this being called jesus christ oh i love this and i love that at the what and i'll paraphrase what you said is my being knew my being knows mm. and so mm. i think this is really important for everyone listening and watching what does your being your inner sense your true self your your the, the truth of you your beingness what does it already know what are you pretending not to know what is the mind getting in the way of what's true mm. for you mm. yeah <laughs> <Woo. laughs> I can tell you one thing uh, from being an analytical guy with a doctorate and being raised in an atheist family, uh, my life is so much more beautiful. And I tear up just thinking about this, having this relationship, um, being able to um, be so graced um, and so blessed to be able to even kneel in, in homage and respect and beauty of this incredible um, Christ consciousness. Christ himself, a God, um, it has been life-changing. Life-changing is an understatement. And so, you know, going from the, you know, as we, the old <laughs> paradigm, the, you know, the science of achievement and having done all those things and then the out of fulfillment, there is nothing, 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 nothing like the gift that comes with it. And, you know, I just, my heart fills up. My son and I will 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 be at home. We'll, we'll cook some dinner. We'll we'll, we'll you know, kick the soccer ball. Run around the house and chase each other, and and we'll sing and dance, and we'll be goofy, and you know, we'll just have a, a ball, and then we'll just look at the altar. I've got an altar, beautiful altar in my in my home. And there's a picture of Jesus, and we'll just say thanks, thank you so much for these blessings, and and being able to lovingly, um, yet consciously, um. It, allow him to know that there is this presence available, that there is this gift available, that there is this love available. And we give credit where credit's due. I would say I give all uh, all glory to God, all credit to Christ. And and I just really feel that this has had such an impact in, in on my life, in my life. Um, and there's nothing that can compare us to it. And there are, as we said, no words in the English language. But I just wanted to put my two cents worth on that for those listening and watching because life is so much more beautiful with this relationship with this kind of connection for me yeah yeah Absolutely. beautiful um what would you share john um i've got one last question i always ask this question on my podcast before we wrap up but i want to share if, uh, i want to check in if there's anything else that you want to share we've talked about a lot of amazing topics thank you so much for taking the time um but over to you what what would you say now if there's any pieces that, of the puzzle that can go click and there it is what would that be Pieces of the puzzle. What was coming through was in our physical reality here, we have examples of a dependency. And now I'm all for being self willed and independent. And, you know, this, this, there's definitely a place for that. Definitely take responsibility and so forth. But the reality in the physical realm is that this oxygen I need to even have this conversation with you, I don't know where it came from. It's a gift given to me every moment. Breath in, breath out. It's a gift. It's a gift. So I'm supported by a gift. Then the beautiful technology to have this conversation. Other people worked hard to develop this so we can have the privilege to have this, this interaction on the other side of the world. The lie, everything. We're held by grace and, and gifted so many things. And that posture fills me with a prolific sense of appreciation and joy and wonderment. And so our physical world suggests that. And when we talk about mystical Christianity, it's simply an acknowledgement and a posture of humility. And the humility just simply says, I, I, there's a need of, of, of a connection here that's beyond just my isolated self. Because in my physical world, my isolated self and that oxygen ain't going to last very long. Yeah. <laughs> and so in the spirit, it's similar. It's just going, hey, no pretense, no needing to behave in a particular church or in a particular way, just authentically going, Jesus, if you really are real and these, these guys are on to something here that's, you know, real, can you reveal yourself to me? I, I would like to know you. Simple, sincere, and then you see what happens. Because mystical Christianity is about a real encounter. It's not about persuasion. It's not about indoctrination. 
It's not about, you know, fantasies or powerless comforts that we need to make us feel better. It's about real encounters that when you have them, you're changed and you feel it (laughs) and it is real. So just that's the invitation, just to ask Christ, reveal yourself to me. I'd like to know you. And and there you go. Just keep it simple and and sincere. (laughs) And so it is. God bless you, brother. Yeah, thank you. And thank you so much for letting me come in here and, and have this opportunity to share in a kind of a more unusual setting of talking about these things. So I, I really appreciate this opportunity. And for those watching this at home, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. It's an honor. And before we wrap up, I just want to say this. Uh, this is the first time this ever happened. I always ask my listeners and viewers, I always say this. <clears throat> if you imagine now that you're on the world stage and there's literally billions of people watching, gathering in, in complete presence to hear your message. What is your message to the world right now? It's the first time I've experienced not having asked that question because the question was actually answered before I asked it. What you just shared was absolutely glorious. And I think that's the best way to wrap this up. Please consider what John just said, what it would be like um, to have that encounter, to ask for that encounter, to ask for that relationship, to offer yourself up to, to the opportunity to have that experience and that relationship. Um, and see what unlocks for you. If it uh, is anything what it has unlocked, uh, revealed, provided, given, shared, blessings, and whatever else for John and myself, well, it may just be in for not a treat, but um, something beyond anything else. Um, thank you, John. I love you, brother. Uh, it's been such an honor uh, to have you in my life. Many years now since we walked this path into a personal development room. We sat down, listened to Dr. John Martini, and, and I looked I over. I remember this. I looked over, <laughs> and I'm like, who is this guy? Because you have this light about you, this energy about you, this grace and presence and power. And I love how you can have so much power and yet be so graceful and humble. And so I'm sitting there, Dr. John Martini, looking at you going, what? Who's this guy? And I, and I remember I asked you, hey, you know, what's your name? Whatever. Can I take you for lunch? And, you know, here we are many, many years later. So I just want to take this moment to really thank you, brother, because your uh, insight, yeah, your coaching, your teaching, your friendship, your brotherhood, uh, your authentic um, way of providing feedback in a way that is no BS, straight to the point. You need to know this to improve your life has been one of the greatest gifts that I've ever received from uh, received from any mentor that I can have and that you and I get to sit here and have a conversation about Christ and, and uh, up-leveling this, taking this to the next level is a dream come true for me. So I want to say thank you. I love you so much. And we are so grateful that you took the time to be with us today, man. Uh, so it's a pleasure. It's a privilege. And you just saying that um, just triggered me to say one particular thing that maybe is interesting to do is is there's a, there's a very mysterious scripture where Christ says, I foreknew you before the foundations of the world. Now, this is very mysterious stuff. And you talk about meeting me and, and feeling some light, something there. But in the realm of the soul, I had a lot of things I had to figure out and walk through. And now a lot of the people watching this who are going to resonate is because their innermost being already knows Christ before the foundation of the earth. And so this is a coming home. This is an unshackling and unfolding um, a revealing and it happens in your own timing in a very natural way and it's it's revealed from the spirit out um and so it, it's a mystery i don't profess to understand it i just have come to understand that's how it's unfolding and so if you resonate with this it'll be real it'll be authentic with you um even if it's just a little seed or something that's also okay don't think it has to be like this or you have to have i was 45 years i and then I had my encounter just, I think it was like five months ago, it, it happened. So, like, it's different. It all unfolded at a pace that's um, natural and organic for each of us. Um, so, that would, I'd like to leave with that. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless everyone listening, watching. Please, if this has been useful for you, um, if you find value in this, if you think others can find value in this, share this. And, and not just with one or two, share it with as many people as you can because every conversation matters every person listening feeling breathing connecting coming home remembering um, or even just keep an open mind makes a difference so please share this um, and thank you again everyone for watching and listening and you 
brother, all the way from Portugal. Thanks for taking the time. I can't wait for the sequel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Much love, everybody. Thank you. Dr. Thank you so much. John Grant Harvey, everybody.